first, people need to like make money, right? Like at Glass, our goal is make 10x the amount of money in 10x less time. So it's like compared to YouTube and TikTok. So it's like compared to what's currently out there that people use to make money, which is YouTube if you're a video creator, we want to 10x that every single time. And we right now average 1,640x what any person would make per view on YouTube. You're listening to The Unstoppable Podcast, the go-to place for everyone to learn about the latest innovations in Web3, NFTs, and the decentralized web. Welcome to the metaverse. GM, GM, welcome to The Unstoppable Podcast. My name is Josh Gordon, I'm your host. Today we're gonna to talk about video NFTs, and I'm joined by Dio, co-founder of Glass Protocol. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty sensational right now. Um, Josh, just trying to keep up with the pace of things and keep putting pressure into the Web3 world. Yeah, I mean, things are moving fast. Are you feeling like that pace of innovation and what you're building is at that same speed or faster now that we're in a bear market? (sighs) It's crazy because you would have thought it would slow down, but it literally actually if you're in it in it literally feels like it's going faster so um i know crypto has these cycles 2017 cycle you know 2021 who knows 2024 who knows but um it just like in those years from 2017 like 2018 to 2020 if i was actively building in those years I feel like I would have a better understanding of the speed, but I was, you know, building another startup during those years. So, you know, now building in Web3, um, I'm really very, very much excited for the current period. And that's why I guess we're building with so much speed and enthusiasm. For sure. Well, let's start off with giving everyone who's listening a background into just how you got into crypto and why you gravitated towards video NFTs. So my road into crypto is a long journey. I um, was aware about Bitcoin in 2013, 2014. Um, I had a few friends, you know, throwing events in Manhattan, New York. I was, I was a high school student in New York City. And, you know, crypto was pretty relevant to most people in my high school circles. And so I never bought any Bitcoin. I finally bought Litecoin and ETH in 2017 not at the best time and then i um just one of my best friends was like going all the way to switzerland to do like blockchain programming courses and um i had just gone to university of chicago and i met sam sinovac one of my sam sims one of my co-founders and uh we uh he was really focused on doing like lightning transactions speeding up the bitcoin line and um what really led us to videos and crypto was we were building a social network before that was fully focused on the map. And we realized that a map was a subsection of video. And we realized that we want to go for something big, something bigger than we've ever done. And we realized video was like eating the world. So we realized probably the most important thing for communication during the pandemic was Zoom, video, things like Riverside, you know, a bunch of things that just sure. help people communicate better. And so we just kind of realized like the most important really technology in the world is just video technology. So we kind of just wanted to implant ourselves inside of that world. And we thought coming into the video world from a crypto perspective might be a good way for the future um and, and that's that's kind of really what it was about it was video plus the opportunity of new incentives with crypto that we thought would make for a better world for creators and video viewers yeah no interesting that you really had that kind of realization or thought about how video is dominant during the pandemic i mean i would say it pushed everything video to the forefront TikTok podcasts. I mean, I'm podcast host myself, like video podcasts are now popping off everywhere. Um, so I'd say a lot of different forms of content that are more engaging, definitely taking off in this time frame. So you also mentioned creators and thinking about creators and during that, can we talk about some of the problems 
that creators have today? Because I want to set the stage of you know what the problem is, and then then soon loop in how Glass and solutions like video NFTs and be able to collect them help solve for some of that. So you know maybe I, I got a bunch of problems around monetization, distribution, you know, community, but I'll let you take it away and go from there. So, like, what is the cultural context of being a video creator today? What it is today is you have these major platforms that, you know, like YouTube, like TikTok, that have moved really to just, like, highly inequitable creator compensation methods. And that means that for most video creators, which, you know, over 60% of... um kids age 6 to 17 want to be a video creator, a, you know, YouTube star. Um, and so the vast majority of aspiring and ambitious creators would honestly be living below the poverty line and they would burn out if they were to use the current um, compensation methods on the current platforms like YouTube and TikTok. 98% of YouTubers make less than minimum wage. 98% of YouTubers cannot afford monthly rent in New York city. Um, and we thought that, that was a problem considering, you know, we, YouTube did start the creator economy was the first to really pay out creators. And that's the best there really is for creators to go to TikTokers leave TikTok to professionalize and monetize on YouTube and 98% of them will fail. So, we we kind of felt we needed to change this and you're seeing now as you know these big platforms are stepping back from their you know creator economy pushes in the last i guess 12 months that they tried to do that you know it's not really the creators at the center and so what we saw is creators are seeing their work as a business they want stable transparent foundations to monetize their efforts creators are more grounded in their aspirations um, and they want a strong, loyal fan base rather than like a viral moment. We also saw that creators, um, audiences in their communities, these audiences are communities and that they are very much invested um, in shared experiences and seeing themselves as a stakeholder in that creator's success and the co-creation of that creator and they want to get closer. You're seeing with Cameo now, like with these NFTs, we've done Cameo-like experiences plus more, you know? Yeah. And so um, Glass is an entirely new framework for creators, curators, and supporter communities. Um, one in which is grounded in a steady, stable creativity creators before everything ecosystem. And one that ultimately is kind of like bringing together you know, some DeFi vibes with creativity, collaboration, connection to drive us forward for this new, this new world we're about to go in that's creative first. Yeah. I mean, listening to some of the, your comments about monetization, it's, it's interesting, eh? like the, the stats around the percentage of kids who want to be YouTubers and, and creators. And I, I wonder, you know, can everybody make a living off of, making content of various like types. Cause I feel like everyone sees like the kids that fall in that statistic, they see all the people who are like crushing it. Right. But if you're making a normal wage, I don't know, 70, 80, hundred thousand a year, um, do we still see all these people want to do it? Or is it just because right now that being a content creator sometimes means you're also like a celebrity of sorts. But I think that I was a soccer player. Yeah. So like, like, like a good story of like that is like, I was a soccer player, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, being a, a sports player, it's like every kid could low key play soccer at some point. And those who want to go play soccer professionally, or those who want to play soccer at the D3 level or D1 level, like they can find their homes, you know, and, and mm -hmm. we kind of want to be a option for a creator at every level, you know, in the same way you can pay D3 soccer, D2 D1, it's like you can be a D3 creator, D2 creator, D1, you know, you can um, establish a community. And the thing that takes burnout away from you is really just actually having a community, actually having a few 
loyal supporters that actually are going to be there to like actually help you figure out what the next thing is to do in terms yeah. like say you know you're doing music video nfts and you're like you know what i want to go and do podcast nfts it's like your community you need people who are going to be there to help you with that switch and so i would say that like athletes creators and the new athletes in a way um and you know most athletes are multi-dimensional athletes most creators are multi-dimensional athletes the good thing about video is it is a multi-dimensional medium yeah i saw a a really good quote recently about audiences and community and it and i'll share it with you it's like if you go to see someone speak you're in an audience because the uh, speaker is facing you and we're all like listening. But if you go to like a community center, um, there's chairs all the way around like the basketball court or something like that. And everyone's facing each other. And so if that, th this person was just kind of highlighting the difference between are you, do you have an audience or do you have a community? And I'm kind of wondering the problems that traditional content creators have uh, I feel like they really just have audiences and they struggle making some of those connections that you're talking about are really helpful in this video NFT world that you're working in. But how do content creators of today establish connections? Because I feel like they have to jump through a lot of hoops with their following. Um, it's it's like, hey, you follow me on this platform, but I'm going to launch something. So you need to sign up for my email list or you need to uh, fill out this form. Like there's... There's a lot of friction points, it seems like, connecting to these people who are watching your videos or engaging whatever content you make. And that's that's what makes me really excited. Like, if we can show the screen of, like, the new product, um, I, I love that you can see everybody who collected your video NFT in the circle. And I really feel like the idea of being able to see transparently who is supporting you is going to just motivate more people to want to be true supporters and is going to just like level the playing field on like who really is supporting creators. Um, so I think, you know, today creators are making emails, list hosts, they're making merch sites, they're making Instagrams, all the YouTubes, TikToks, all types of things to start their video career off, whether you're a podcaster or whatever. In the future, I think you're going to just start on glass, build your community up. People, are, You're going to have podcast collector scouts, and they're going to be like, all right, like right, I'm looking for you know who's really serious about this. In the same way, you know, you got soccer, like Chelsea Soccer Club that has scouts looking at kids at the age of six who, who are playing soccer. So it's like you're going to start to see, you know, people who are like, you know what, I, I think Josh really has it. Because it's podcast stuff, he knows how to get it out there. He's committed. He wants to do this. And you're going to get people who just start collecting your NFTs from the beginning of your career going all the way on. And, you know, some episodes might be crazy, you know, flips. Yeah. Other episodes might just be casual, you know, drops. Um, but regardless, you're getting, you're, you're slowly growing a community from the ground up the whole way through and giving back to them over time rather than like Mr. Beast going up, you know, slowly the whole way through and then like really dumping back at the end. It's like, you know, this you could probably give incrementally each year for the new supporters that came to you and your collectors are even earning off of your creation. Yeah. I mean, you talk about collectors there and it leads me into another thought of mine, which was what problems fans, consumers, collectors have with the way content shared online right now, like how can you maybe paint an example of, let's say there's your favorite music artist dropping videos or your favorite vlogger. How does a fan engage with them today? And then how would they engage with them now in the world of video NFTs? Love that question. Um, so today, right, if you're a supporter or a fan and you want to connect with a video creator, the first thing you would do is you would, you know, watch their content. <laughs> Or, you know, you know, observe it. And then after that, if you want to get closer, you know, you could go to YouTube and then go to their contact and email them. You can leave a comment. You can go to their Instagram, maybe find them there, leave a DM. Pretty much you're not going to get any return on maybe 
any of these. Maybe a YouTube comment, maybe an Instagram comment, they might like it or respond, but you're not actually going to get that access to that creator. I tell everybody... So I, I tell everybody to hit me up on Twitter, like normally, you know, but, but you're right. I mean, I, how many people that are listening to this, engaging in conversations with me on a week to week basis is much lower than, you know, the people consuming content via YouTube or like Apple or Spotify. Exactly. And so, um, yeah, today it's like they would go to your Twitter, try to connect with you there, but the difference is in the future, if you could collect someone's NFT, tell them why you collected it, right? Tell them, you know, get to know more about you. It's like, you're going to be way more aware and attentive to that potential supporter than if they hadn't collected. So I think collecting gives you an access path and a stake in that creator's future that can, you can say like, like I actually want this person to succeed that just like a basic DM won't necessarily do and over time you know the world's gonna it's just increasing in speed it's like world peace through world trade is going to be the fastest way to world peace like if we don't if people are not trading if we're just having conversations and there's no exchange of skills or there's no exchange of value in any way like like it's not going to really work for too long with you and that person because there, there's you know life is not forever you know people have to come into this life trade away and they pass right so uh it, it's like i think the the idea of trading leading to world peace i go into this person's home and i might leave you know a glass of wine they come into my home they leave a glass of wine that type of idea like although that might just be considered karma or just good faith trading you know, regardless, I think putting that type of energy into the world is going to lead you to um, just a better relationship with your audience, a better yeah. uh, ability to grab. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting take there, you know, trading leading to peace, right? But I do think one thing trading does as well is it turns the consuming of content into a more active and engaged like activity. Uh, Often I find that we're all scrolling, watching videos, you know, liking tweets, liking Instagram posts. But then when you add this collection element to it, it's, I don't know, it's more active statement saying like, I really like this and I like what you're putting out into the world. And like, I want to be a little bit of a, a part of it and attach my name to it. I think like I'd much rather be a collector than just a follower. You just unleash something in my mind with that one that like I had never like realized was a huge hurdle for all of web three. So like the idea is that like you said like active statement and it's just like an active state. If you're in an active state of using these social networks, that's going to lead to this podcast. If you're in a uh, passive state of using a social network, you would never lead to this podcast. And so I think the most important thing is that collecting is literally the beginning of an active state of using any social network. So people are actually going to have to start thinking about why they're using, why they're spending their time here, what they're doing. And I think they're going to start to realize they've wasted a lot of time in the past. And now if they can use social networks actively and then go touch grass, they would probably prefer to do that than to use social networks passively and like never touch grass because it's like you never know what you're going to miss if you're using it passively it's like if you're using it actively yeah. you're coming in for a focus you're collecting that nft you're listening to that twitter spaces you're dming that creator right at the spaces and then you're out and it's like that is an active way of living that is living in motion and that is potentially the biggest hurdle for all of web3 to get over switching people over from active state, it's actually not going to happen. Like you're not going to have, like human nature is not just going to turn people who There's, wanted to passively scroll. Like, yeah. you know, what might happen though is that you'll have people who um, share more. Like I think sharing will increase. Like re retweeting and sharing might increase 
maybe active tweet creation may not have be you 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 know maybe the one percent of tweeters is not going to go to ten percent, but you'll get yeah. like like three percent more people retweeting and sharing and supporting a creator's success and that could honestly make all the difference like two more people sharing your ip story two more people retweeting your thing because they know this is going to put food on the table for you honestly it's like that is going to make the world a little bit better and like that's the most i really think we can push this decade and then i think after this decade it's i think it's on yeah. I think for sure our our generation is definitely people who are thinking about like con just conscious consumption I'd say all around. I mean and everyone's going to have different pockets that they're probably pretty conscious about whether it's like veganism or it's what you do on social media, right? There's there's spectrums to everything, but it's interesting to think about how the the collection pu putting your name on it um, it becomes part of your digital profile and I, it, it makes it, it makes your digital identity a little bit more vibrant. And so maybe my next question for you is as you become conscious, as you become active out there and you're collecting content, whether it's a video NFT or really any NFT, but how do you see that affecting our digital identities? Um, and and how we portray that digital identity now versus once we really start getting active into the, the nft collection that that is one of the bigger that's that's like i think it was the unstoppable web founder actually on the rehash podcast that was talking about first people need to like make money right like at glass our goal is make 10x the amount of money in 10x less time so it's like compared to YouTube and TikTok. So it's like compared to what's currently out there that people use to make money, which is YouTube, if you're a video creator, we want to 10 X that every single time. And we right now average a thousand and six hundred and forty X what any person would make per view on YouTube. And so we're succeeding there. And that's because pretty much like no one gets paid on YouTube. So it's actually a low key, lower bar. But to build the technology we're building, it's pretty tough, right? So it's like, I think, yes, music, you know, is going to have the iPod shuffle moment, which is going to lead into um, the iPhone, right? So I think, yeah, you, we are on a trajectory to have an iPhone moment for Web3 in the next four to five years from the start of music NFTs. Um, and video happens to be able to be a part of all of these moments. And so that's the the first thing like help people monetize these moments more as a collector as a creator and then what what was the uh, uh the other active state it was, just, it was just like you know i was just wondering how you see our digital identities changing a little bit as we start having all these collections um and, and yeah does it bleed into real life does it just stay online yeah so those digital identities like who, you know, who's tagged on that video is going to turn into who's split in the revenue for that video, which is going to turn into like, I need to go to this concert tonight and get this video of Kendrick Lamar. Because if I don't go to get this video of Kendrick, like I, I literally, like, even though I paid $40 for that ticket, I know for a fact I could have made maybe a hundred dollars in $60 profit just for going out to this event. And so I think it's literally going to incentivize people to go outside because outside might have some cooler videos to make right and then it, it turns out if you've ever been in a music video or you've ever shot a music video with friends it's like the funnest day of your life like you literally always have fun when it's like yo let's go outside and shoot. i think every human being on this earth should shoot a music video i think that's the natural like form of video. like like we see videos as like the gutenberg revolution so like we see this like in the same way in the 1490s, you had like the printing press and you had people who just did not understand why being able to write and store your ideas onto pen and paper was important. We think that like being able to store your ideas into videos, your great grandchildren will choose the videos over the diary or over the book, right? Over the journal. And yeah. so that's what it means to digital identity. It means 
500 years, who's going to remember you if you didn't put it on the video? It means in uh, 300, 400 years, what the things you're going to value the most are going to be your child's first steps on video, right? Charlie Bit My Finger sold for $681,000. NBA Top Shot pretty much started the NFT movement. And so we were like, okay, like we got inspired by video clips of basketball players, right? That was the first, you know, they've done $971 million in volume in two years, right? We've done like over $1.1 million in, in a year. But like we're creating a new market that's not just focused on the basketball niche. We were focusing on the music niche at the beginning, and I think that's a good niche to focus on, especially because it's it's a foundational niche to Web three, um, and we're gonna focus there pretty much forever. Um, but we're also gonna focus on some other places for the multi dimensionality of video. And so I think, yeah, your digital identity in video is probably gonna be your most important identity. I think maybe in 10 to 20 years, like, I think like, you know, maybe five to 10 years, like we could realize that like the most important thing yeah. of all of web three is like, who's in that video. I like the take. I like the take a lot. It's, it's interesting. Cause it's like, you collect it. This video is associated with your wallet and uh, you can come back to that wallet, that identity and, and look at your collection. I mean, I feel like right now our content on the internet is dispersed in so many different places. I mean, I got stuff on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and it's, if I told my grandchild in the future, hey, let's come look at some memories. It's like, where do you even start? Because by then there's gonna be a, a thousand more social media apps. But I think a, a core principle of NFTs is like, sure, you sell it on glass, but you buy it, it sits in your wallet and it's this one central place for it. Um, yeah. regardless yeah. of if like glass is a website at that point or not. But, um, Agreed. I also got to say like you, you talk about music videos. I mean, I, I don't, you didn't know my background actually, but I got something behind me. I came up in content shooting music videos <laughs> with, uh, with my best friend. So we, we, I shot like 37, we did a music video a week for 37 straight weeks. And we were like, he was trying to rap. I was trying to be like, I was DJ videographer, like hype man type of thing. So I was playing a support role there. But um, 100% agree, some of the best days ever. And I go back on YouTube and you know watch some of our videos um, every now and then. Send me that to link. Relive some memes. I will. Yeah, I will. I'll send you some of my, my favorite ones I shot. Um, and honestly, even though he's not uh, rapping anymore and I'm not shooting music videos anymore, you know, I'm wondering, as a content creator, I have this repository of work. Can I mint it? You know, can I put some of my best music videos out there? And like, even if it's just to give to some of my friends as an NFT, right? Like, is there a market for that too? Or do I have to be approaching it as a creator who's trying to, you know, really monetize this? So, yes, yes. Like you can put your OG videos, your favorite videos of all time, any video in your camera roll, you can put that up as a video NFT. Um, on glass right now i would say that like we're focused more like the distribution strategy right now is focusing on getting someone who's going to consistently post videos and considering like you had 37 videos like i definitely think that that is like you would have been the the creator we would be talking to right now right yeah, someone who's saying two years too early I mean, uh, and now you're on this podcast, so you're still, right? So yeah. two years too early, but just, just baking it, just getting ready. Like you're really just baking it. And so um, 100%, you can put any type of video up. You can put an old video up. We've seen John Waltz put a video up that like from 2014 that sold, um, you know, videos on YouTube that people put on class have sold, videos on Vimeo, like any video you're thinking. And if you want to, like get more research on this highly would advise anyone watching this to go to eth.glass.xyz or just go to glass.xyz to see the Solana drops. We are on the Solana and the ETH blockchain, the first video NFT marketplace. And I think the best way to see it is like, it, it's really like the open sea of video NFTs, right? Cause it's like, we can expand, go as many categories as open sea can. Um, OpenSea was the first to do JPEG NFTs marketplace. 
um, primary and secondaries. And um, we think the MP4 market is bigger than the JPEG market. And so, yeah. Like why, I, I, I love the, the statement that MP4 market's bigger than the JPEG market. Um, <laughs> And, and because you brought up OpenSea, like as a creator today, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of overwhelm, there's an overwhelming feeling of where do I even start? Because there's all these marketplaces and I think a lot of content come, sometimes can fit into different buckets. So like, let's say you have a video NFT, how do you choose between dropping on OpenSea or dropping on Glass? I mean, and then there's this third option, which is creating a custom contract, but I think that's where you enter the technical challenges that it probably pushes away 90% plus of creators who are really looking for like a low or no code solution. Yeah, like definitely not custom contracts for like someone for like where we are right now. Um, I think down the line custom contracts, you know, will become more relevant um, as more and more creators like do their research, but getting creators to do their research when they're focusing on Instagram and TikTok and the next trend is very Stop. hard. Um, and so I think creators want to drop on glass rather than open scene because we focus specifically on videos. We're also younger. We're also focusing on, we help you market your drop. We'll do a Twitter spaces with you and we'll help you sell out your drop or help you sell. We'll connect you to collectors. Um, and open is not going to do all that. So, I think that's really why. And then the other thing is like, if, you, if people have seen what, how we've innovated in the last 10 months, they've seen we've tried a lot of things on two different, you know, on, on one chain and now we're on a new chain. And so like, no one's really ever gone from like ETH to Solana for video NFTs. And so they, they understand that like, you know, we are, at the tip of the spear when it comes to information on how to execute um, a video NFT platform. And we're working with creators that are on the tip of the spear. Like, you know, all the creators we job with on this new glass shop, Jamie Cornelia did, I think, which might have been the first music video NFT on uh, Solana. And then um, we had Ray Isla, we had Latasha. We had John Waltz, Sophia Alexa, like, like we got creators coming up that are going to be crazy. And so I think, you know, we, we had leading ETH creators, you know, dropping on Solana for the first time. And I think Solana is a better entry point for anybody that wants to get into Web3. Like more people are trading on Solana um, daily than they're trading on ETH. And ETH has been trading and trending down. For like the why past is that? Months in activity. Why is that? Because is it just transaction yeah. fees? Because I feel like ETH fees are now yeah. low, but are they still? Is it still any fee is higher than what it's going to be on Solana? The real reason, like if you're in the streets, the real reason is like literally when people want to start off with like with crypto, they want to buy a full one of whatever that thing is, and like you know, I have friends who call me like, yo. Like, damn, Solana is so much easier because, like, I could buy a full Solana. Rather, I can't buy a full ETH. And so, like, the actual price of Solana is low enough for people to, like, buy it um, and, and, like, start trading and, like, get returns. And then so it's, like, people want to trade. They want to get returns. They want to start flipping NFTs. And it's, like, do you have $100 on Solana? You could potentially make it. But if you have $100 on ETH, like, you're not, like – you don't have any help. You need at least a thousand dollars on E to like really start to like make it. And so it's going into its Bitcoin phase. Like ETH is great. It's, it's always going to be, you know, great. Um, Bitcoin's great. Um, and now Solana is focusing fully on speed and low gas fees. And I think it's going to be great for that. So it's like, we want to build on that because it's the first to establish itself as being great on transactions per second, lower gas fees, and a good community for other platforms to build on. But we, we do see it as blockchain platform creator community. And, and all of those, that four needs to be moving back and forth. Like it needs to be Solana, Glass, need to be tight, tight with creators with community you know the podcast community for unstoppable needs to be tight with you which is tight with 
you know, platform, yeah. which is tight with blockchain. And so it's just like allowing for that tightness in the ETH community. Like I can't, we're not tight with Vitalik or something like that. Totally. So we talked about monetization. We talked about collection. I definitely want to finish out the pod talking more about community. We've touched on it a few times, but I, I think an interesting, I want to do two things. Like one, ask you some community questions and then one, do a little bit of a case study on this podcast on how you would approach uh, a podcaster getting into some NFTs. But first, so you mentioned like doing Twitter spaces and helping connect creators to collectors. What are, what are some either really awesome like growth hacks that Glass has been doing to make that community connection? Or have there been any standout examples from the creators on the platform that you've seen someone do to really emphasize that community connection? Like some after they've done a drop or maybe in anticipation of a drop? Yeah, I mean, we have some just shot, like, like it's, we have shocking, creators shock me every day with just how they generate hype. Yeah, like hype, like, you know, I think the most important thing are really two things that I learned over the weekend, which is like better videos and better at selling videos are the type of creators that we want to focus on in the beginning. Um, and the mission is to d- demonstrate the true value of video content, um, in a way that like actually ends up like accelerating investment, inspiration and creation and community. So like, that's our goal to really demonstrate that like what we're doing right now is actually valuable. Um, and so I think when it comes to creators, the creators that like really believe in their work and really want to go and sell that, like they will sell it and they will succeed. Like Everflow is a great example. Jack Frost, like Jack Frost did a combo of like a PFP project with glass music video and a T drops, you know, and, yeah. and an audio visual that, you know, it's like a, you know, audio visual. So, and then he has a Twitter community group chat and we say gm every day and there jamie sound of fractures he has a twitter community group chat has all of his collectors from all of his drops across multiple platforms come into there and i'm just making community like i'm just literally getting so many new friends nowadays just from all who just share a love for someone's music or who share a love for uh someone's video or who share a love for someone's personality in the Twitter spaces or who shares love for, you know, this stuff. So I think, yes, audio Twitter spaces are a better way for connection in the same way buying something from someone is a better way to show your true connection with them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's, we see so many strategies creators use and we also have strategies we give to creators as well that like, I mean, like, I don't want to reveal all the strategies because, like, I feel like that's the, like, that's one of the secret most important. Sauce. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the most important secret sauces we do. And it's just so variable per creator. Sure. Like, for, for you, it's well, like, like let's, what, what... Let's talk about podcast NFTs. Like, if I'm a, I'm a, I'm a podcaster, right, and I'd, I would love to drop maybe even this episode on Glass, but we can, we can talk offline about that. But let's say I'm a podcaster. I want to start, I'm making the videos how did what's my um like quick my quick hitting on this like my one two three step to dropping these uh strategy i'm thinking should i do a one-time drop should i plan this out as like a series um i don't know is there any like addition size you can recommend what, what comes to mind yeah so addition size we suggest 50 additions at 0.5 solana you know 20 dollar price point you know something around the movie ticket range um and then we would say but, but we pioneered that you know for for media nfts getting around a um movie ticket like price consistently like we started off doing one-on-one auctions on e and you know now we're doing 15 dollars additions on solana and so that is you know both market behavior as well as you know our decisions to go and do that um as well as the the market but that's where i would say with addition size and uh price and then when it comes to uploading the video to glass you know it's just drag drop upload simple upload video um 
and we would, you know, talk together on what date it makes sense to go public with this. Once you upload, you can upload unlimited. You could do your series every single day on that day. Um, we've been talking about a podcast day in the same way that there's a music Fridays, new music Fridays, which, you know, I've talked to the person who originally came up with that idea of new music Fridays around when Kanye was doing good music Fridays in 2013. That's really when Apple and these other platforms chose to do new music Fridays. And that was a creator that chose to drop new music every single Friday. Right. And so I think, you know, you have, we're seeing creators like nudes who has a 16 episode podcast that's about to drop on glass you know that converges the music nft space and the visual video nft space um and just is more for the spiritual people in the web three you know spiritual video nfts and so he's gonna you know drop on like a wednesday and then just drop consistently at that time each wednesday and you know it doesn't have to sell out um, yep. people don't have to buy it. There's no pressure to sell it out. It's just put it up there and see if you can build up a true community for that season one. And then it's like, you know, if it's a hit podcast and people are like, yo, this shit is great. It's like, they're going to come back and scoop up all the primary sales on addition on season one by season two. And, you know, you're going to be moving and you can do, you can do ways where it's like, if you collected each one in season one, you get some type of access pass in season two, which I yeah. think Adam Levy's done. Yeah, yeah, I just had Adam Levy on the pod and he gave a ton of good tips too. But I, I think it would be interesting even to uh, drop podcast video NFTs that come with some kind of perk with the guest on the show, at least in terms of shows like this with you. But that that's a whole nother level of coordination on the creator, you know, making sure that you're down for that kind of thing and planning that out because that takes a lot of forethought. Um, but just something, I, I don't know, something I'm thinking about playing around with in my head. We could do that. And, and so like Marky Basie, when he sold his music video in MT on Glass, the collector was able to go backstage to his concert. And we just coordinated that through a beer chat. Um, or like Empire Dow. I'm at Empire Dow right now. And it's like, you know, if you know someone collects this NFT, right, they get to pull up and have a day in the life with Glass at yeah. Empire Dow and just like literally shadow the whole team, stay with us in the apartment, you know, one day in New York City. It's like the experiences are so much sicker yeah. from these NFTs. People have no idea. And it's not, oh, but NFTs don't do this. It's, yes, you can watch this video. And if you buy it, you can pull up to New York City and hang out with the whole team and be in the in the movie and da 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 and and so it's just a bunch more ands that people haven't considered that is the real value proposition of web three. It's not really replacing for sure necessarily anything. All right. Well I'm just gonna put it out in the world. If you're listening to the pod still, first of all, shout out to you. Appreciate you. And second of all, there's gonna be a video NFT of this episode dropping TBD some point in the future TBD. with some kind of cool perk. We'll figure it yes. out, but uh, yes. uh, I, I love it. All right. Well, this has been a great discussion so far. We covered a ton of topics. I want to hit you with some quick questions and then wrap up. Is that cool with you? Sounds fantastic. Oh, all right. So a couple quick questions. Um, and this is almost like uh, – short answers but it sounds like limited edition versus open edition you're recommending limited yes all right and then recommended supply can you throw out that number again on solana or what, what blockchain on solana 50. okay and if you were to put a monetization goal for a drop how much would you say is like the north star well, if you sell 50 editions on Solana at 0.5 soul, you would make like $750. So like, I would say like North Star would be like 250 to $700 as a first drop. Cool. And then when thinking about content of the future, especially in video terms, short form or long form, like which one do you think is winning? The most in entertaining first 30 seconds of the video <laughs> like like just put the most entertaining parts of the video at the beginning and if it's entertaining enough 
the whole way through. You'll watch it the whole way through, but I would say short form, I guess, because I just said the first 30 seconds. Yeah. And then, you know, my last question was going to be entertaining or educational, but it sounds like entertaining. Entertaining. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, thanks for answering that. The final question is the one, two, web three. First question I got for you is who's an influential creator, entrepreneur, collector that's really inspired or educated you? I'm really inspired. Like, I, I think, can it be someone on the bad team? <laughs> it's uh, your answer. It's I, anyone. I'm, I mean, Jamie Cornelia really inspires me. I really like what Jamie Cornelia has been able to do. Um, I love what Latasha has been able to do. I love what, uh, I love, so, there's so many, like, these people are building, like, countries like these aren't the same type of creators we're used to and i'm like i tweeted earlier today web3 is replacing influencers with creators it's like these these are not influencers these aren't people like kim kardashian who are gonna say go get ethereum max these are people that are actually like really like ray isla you know really thinking about like how can i be one of the first creator businesses out there like real creator businesses. Um, and I think like, you know, the past creators, like the Kanye's, the Jay-Z's, like they, they were the first to really think this way. Like when Jay-Z said, I'm a businessman, not a businessman. It's like, he is an actual business. And so, um, and he's a business that releases products, right? Each video is your product. And so, uh, I think Jay-Z, Jay-Z, I would say is probably inspires me like the most yeah well hey you're in new york city so that that makes sense <laughs> um and then last question in five years what do you think's the craziest thing we'll be doing in the metaverse that people just aren't thinking about yet uh the craziest thing we'll be doing in the metaverse i don't even know what the metaverse is but like i would say that like the craziest thing no one's thinking about is like karaoke like like everyone does carry everyone likes karaoke like no one's thinking about karaoke and FTEs. i don't even know what that is but like i feel like if you're in a metaverse you're having a party bringing in twitter space vibes with karaoke vibes with video nft vibes audio video nft karaoke vibes in metaverse i know Hey, it they sounds like the it. next hot Web3 startup. I like it. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, karaoke and these. All um, right. All right. Well, thanks so much for this episode and, and sharing all your thoughts on video NFTs, collection, community with me. I think it's very, very informative. And um, I think there's a lot to learn from this conversation. So can you let people know who are listening? Where can they find you online after, after listening? Yeah, so you can find me online at dioadiosin10 which is my Twitter, D-A-Y-O-A-D-E-O-S-U-N-10, or just dial.glass with two eyes as my username. And then you can find me at, I think, dialadios and 10 on Instagram too. Awesome. Um, and then, you know, just DM me. DM me. If you're a creator, you want to drop on glass, feel free to DM me. Um, if you also make sure to fill out the type form, which is on the glass.xyz site and follow at glass protocol, turn on your notifications. We got some awesome stuff coming, cool growth hacks, cool stuff all around. Um, that will be showing soon at glass protocol. Love it. Well, thank you so much for listening to the Unstoppable Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd really appreciate subscribing on whatever audio platform you're listening on. And hey, if the video NFTs sounded cool to you, keep an eye out because they'll be dropping soon. And with that, soon. see you thank next you, week. Thank you, Dash. You're welcome. <laughs> see you. Catch you thank all in the metaverse. You. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Unstoppable Podcast. If something we said today resonated with you, please subscribe, leave us a review, and share this with your friends. And remember, this conversation doesn't have to end here. Tweet us your thoughts, ideas, or questions at Unstoppable Web. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week.